God, I, I don't know how it even
All right, folks, good afternoon. Welcome to Admiral TV. Uh, first baseball broadcast of the season. Home away from home. Joe Cannon Stadium, beautiful complex has been recently renovated. Um, your Severn Admirals are taking on the St. Mary Saints this afternoon. It's going to be a little hard for me to uh, be able to give full commentary today because it's gusting to gale force winds. Uh, 20, 21 mile an hour, stiff wind, gusting over 40. Uh, it's definitely going to be an adventure for fly balls and, and whatnot. Um, so do the best we can. But anyway, uh, starting lineup this afternoon. First, we'll start for the visiting Saints. This is their first game of the year. Uh, leading off is the first baseman, number 23, Henry Carbone. Batting second, the shortstop, number 17, Harrison Deloach. Hitting third, the catcher, number eight, Brendan Moran. Batting cleanup and doing pitching, number 25, Nick Holm. Batting fifth, the center fielder, number seven, Dom Hicks. Batting sixth, the left fielder, number two, Ben Benfiglio. Batting seventh, the third baseman, number 13, Colin Talbot. Hitting eighth in right field, number four, Harry Falkowski. Batting ninth, the designated hitter, number six, Tegan McDonough, who's hitting for the second baseman, number three, Blake Dyer. Again, please forgive me, the wind is uh, nothing to joke about today. Uh, for your seven apples, leading off the designated hitter is number two, Fletcher Warner. He's hitting in place of the left fielder, number seven, David Livingston. Batting second, the second baseman, number 17, Andy Blank. Hitting third and doing the pitching, number eight, Caden Blank. Not the first set of last names you'll be hearing pair of, pairs of today. Batting clean up to shortstop, number four, Aiden Shadlick. Batting fifth, the first baseman, number 22, Matt Fisher. Hitting sixth, the third baseman, number six, Sean Ward. Batting seventh in center field, number five, Ben Campion. Batting eighth and doing the catch in number 14, Brennan Shadlick, another same last name duo. And batting ninth in right field, number 11, Lawrence Jacobs. So the Admirals coming into this game with a 1-0 record. They won their season opener last Monday at Riverdale Baptist 9-3. Slightly better conditions than what we have today. Again, it's in the low mid 50s. We're at a beautiful complex at Joe Cannon Stadium, but this wind is uh, is no joke. Um, so, what's going to make it a little interesting today? We got a turf field. The Admirals, when they play their normal games at Kinder at Kinder Farm Park, that's a grass uh, outfield with an alternate infield. So, ball's going to roll a little quicker. Ball gets in the gaps, ball gets over the outfielder's heads, especially with the gaps being 380 and 410 straight away. There's potential for triples and inside the park home runs if bad routes are taking the ball. Combo on top of that, the wind in, in the outfield blowing basically 40 miles an hour from left to right. For those of you old enough who are watching to remember, you feel like you're uh, at Candlestick Park this afternoon. And your Admirals take the field. Again, your uh, defensive positioning, going starting in the outfield, going from left to right in left field, number seven, David Livingston. In center field, number five, Ben Campion. And in right field, number 11, Lawrence Jacobs. Going around the horn in the infield at first base, number 22, Matt Fisher. At second base, number 17, Andy Blank. At shortstop, number four, Aiden Shadlick. And at third base is number six, Sean Ward. And then the battery for your Admirals, behind the plate, number 14, Brennan Shadlick. And pitching for your Admirals, number eight, Caden Blank. Caden Blank, in his first outing of the year last Monday, went four innings, gave up only three hits, one unearned run, no walks, eight strikeouts. Earned the victory through 65% strikes, which is really good for the first time out. Features a, a three-pick mix, fastball, changeup, and a curved slider. Blank last year led the entire MIAA, all divisions, in strikeouts with 84 in just 42 innings. He averaged 14 strikeouts per seven innings, tops in the MIAA. And the St. Mary Saints, beginning their 2024 season, moving down from the A Conference to the B Conference this year, leading things off as the first baseman, Henry Carbone.
First pitch at 4 or 5 p.m. Fastball called strike one. Fastball runs a little inside. You're going to see a little bit of tailing action on the lefty's fastball this afternoon again with that gale force wind blowing from left to right. Those fastballs and especially the changeups coming out of lefty's hands is going to have some extra motion today. Fastball fouled off and the count is now one and two. Curveball just off the outside corner. The umpire hesitated for a second, thinking he was going to ring him up, but he decided not, and the count runs 2 2. Fastball in on the hands of shortstop Ian Shadlick. Throws over to Matt Fisher, who stretches, makes the reach for the first out of the inning. Harrison Deloach, the shortstop, digs in. Shows butt, pulls back. Ball one. In the little film that I saw of St. Mary's from last year, they definitely showed bunt early on a lot of at-bats and pulled back. Shows bunt again. Takes a fastball on the outside corner for a call strike one. St. Mary's last year, again, they were in the A conference. Perhaps, you know, A conference is loaded with some really good teams. Spalding, John Carroll, that fastball is fouled off the netting for strike two. And against that caliber of competition, you might be tempted to play a little small ball, try to churn out some runs. So it's interesting to see whether St. Mary's is going to take the same approach moving down to the B conference, if they're going to swing a little bit more freely or continue a small ball approach. Pitch just misses down below beneath the knees and the count runs even 2-2. Swung on and missed, strike three. And quickly there are two away. Ninth strikeout of the year for Blank. Punched out eight and four innings his last time. And now digging in the catcher, number eight, Brennan Moran. Fastball, call, strike one. And it's good to see Blank working that fastball in on the righties. Line drive over first baseman's head. Past Jacobs into right field, off the fence. Rounding first, Moran. He's going to go into second base, standing up. And it is a two-out double for the Saints. As mentioned before, this this is an all turf field, so you got to take steeper, more gradual angles. You can't take a hard angle to the ball, or it's going to get past you. It's going to get on you quick. And uh, Jacobs was the first one to learn that lesson this afternoon. But Blank, with runner on second, two away, looking to just get the next batter here. His opposing pitcher, Nick Holm. Fastball, runs away, ball one. Fastball to the east, strike one. These two teams did not square off last year against one another. Again, because St. Mary's was in the A, we were in the B. Ground ball to third, Sean Ward scoops it, throws it over to first for the third out of the inning. No runs, a hit, no errors, one runner left. After a half inning complete, St. Mary's nothing, Severn coming back.
home game. Get way better signal out here than back to Kinder. Yeah, right? It's coming in crystal clear. See? Ah, that's awesome. Now it's just a matter of trying to protect the camera from the wind tunnel. This, this is fierce. Umpires because Coppin forgot this. This over here. Hey. For the moment, I don't know. All right, welcome back here. Bottom half of the first inning on the mound for St. Mary's this afternoon. Number 25, Nick Holm, who you just saw in the last half inning, grounded out the third to end the visiting half of the first. Leading things off for the Admirals. Fletcher Warner. DHing today for the left fielder, David Livingston. Warner, last year 314 hitter, led the team in runs, led the team in stolen bases, looking to start things off this afternoon. First pitch, off the plate low, ball one. At the knees, strike one. Seen home more quickly, maybe he doesn't want to have his hat blow off his head like he did during warm-ups. First three pitches are all on the outside half. Fastball, fastball, fastball away. And quickly, the count is one and two. Just off the plate. Quick and authoritative call from the umpire to indicate that that was just off the plate. On the white of the left-handed batter's box, it counts two and two. high and the count runs full. If there's anything we're seeing here, it looks like the, the game plan is away, 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 away. Will they go away for the sixth time in a row? Or are they going to try to come in? Gets past the guy in first baseman in right field for a base hit. So the leadoff man, Fletcher Warner, finds a way on with a leadoff single to get things going for the Admirals. Which brings up the second baseman, freshman Andy Blank. One of two starting freshmen in the lineup for the Admirals this afternoon. Catcher Brennan Chadlick being the other. Quick pickoff move to first. He was only about two steps off. But again, Fletcher Warner led the Admirals with 15 stolen bases last year, so leadoff man getting on. They're definitely aware that he might go it to go. Isn't going here. First pitch foul straight back. Count 0-1. Huge leads from Fletcher Warner over at first, but yet he's still warranted two throws over so far, and only one pitch has been thrown. Runner's going. Ground ball to short. Throws the first. It gets by the first baseman. Again, that win took that throw. Told you that wind is going to play tricks on the ball this afternoon. That shortstop had to make the throw, but it was very fortuitous for your Admirals 
runner was going there, so he was able to stay out of the double play, which forced the shortstop to have to make the throw to first, which sailed to sailed him. He tried to make that little three o'clock throw, but that ball sailed away and that's beyond the stretch of the first baseman, and you got runners on the corners with nobody out, and Caden Blank up looking to help his own cause. Fastball off the plate for ball one. Kane Blank, a 345 hitter, four year Admirals last year, second on the team. Runner going, swung on and missed. Fake throw to third. They throw it on to second. He, he's safe, but it is a stolen base for Andy Blank. So second and third, 1-1 one, one count. Ball's driven down the left, tailing foul. Wynn tried to help it pull it back in, but not enough there. The count's one and two. So if you've noticed, if you've paid any attention to the first couple of bats, the game plan has been away, 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 away. Called strike three. Just caught the edge of the plate there for the first out. That brings up the shortstop, Aiden Shadlick. Stud pre calc student, one of mine. Curveball slips out of the pitcher's hands, ball one. So Aiden Shadlick, older brother of Brennan Chadlick, who's the starting catcher. Cleanup hitter, looking to help out the Admirals here. Foul back, count runs even, one and one. Chadlick, a junior, in his first year with Severn, spent the past two years at Crofton High School. Looking to put the Admirals on the board here. Just needs a ground ball to the right side. Curveball hangs up and away, count runs two and one. Ground ball to the right side, scores a run. Don't need to be too big, but you find something you like, do something with it. Go. Down and in for ball three, counts three and one. As a baseball fan, as a former not so good baseball player, uh, I really appreciate this umpire's quick and decisive calls and audible calls behind the plate here this afternoon. Curveball off the plate for ball four. And that loads the bases for first baseman Matt Fisher. Probably one of the most dangerous hitters for your Admirals. 362 hitter for Severn last year. Tops on the team. Last game against Riverdale Baptist went three for four with two doubles. One of which that banged off the fence in right field. Ground ball, short, has to go to his right. Makes the throw over to second for one, but they're unable to turn the double play. So that will be an RBI for your Admirals. And the host Admirals take a one nothing lead on the RBI fielder's choice off the bat of Matt Fisher. Third baseman, Sean Ward's digging in. Well, digging in as much as he can because it is all turf. Runners on the corners, two away. Fastball on low. The game plan from St. Mary's and Holm is away, away, away. They might occasionally pop one in, but they're looking to work off on the outer half on all the batters. Throw over to first, Fisher's back in safe. Tell you what, for Holm, is his misses haven't been big. Been right around the plate. Narrow misses. That one's a narrow miss off the plate too. The catcher Moran doing all he can to try to frame that one back in, but he couldn't move that too much. He counts two and up. Upstairs above the belt, and it's three and out. Oh, 
Does Coach Starr give him the green light? Just off the plate for ball four. And once again, the bases are loaded. Early big spot for your Admirals here. Bases loaded once again. Two away. Center fielder Ben Campion stepping into the plate for the Admirals. Going to be continuing his studies at Dartmouth next year. Big spot here for the senior who led the Admirals with five doubles last year. Get one in the outfield, see what happens. As the hat blows off the pitcher's head while mid-pitch throws the fastball down the middle for strike one. I guess that's the cost of having long flowing locks of hair, something that I do not have. Fastball in and off the plate, and the count runs even one and one. One of the few times you've seen him try to work inside, but Campion is really taking the inside away here. And that one's fouled off the left side. Hopefully it misses my car. Okay, so it's time for Campion here to battle here with two strikes. Fastball away. Count runs even, two and two. with a beat on it, catches it for the third and final out of the inning. But the Admirals do play to run on one hit. They leave three on base, one inning complete. 7-1, St. Mary's 0. Welcome back here, Joe Cannon Stadium, Severin's home away from home, so to speak. Admirals on top of the Saints, 1-0 as we begin the visiting half of the second inning. Center fielder Dom Hicks to lead things off for the Saints. Caden Blank. Strike out his first inning. Hicks using the knob of his bat to move the turf around, I guess. Cut on a miss, strike one. 
So once again, we're playing at Joe Cannon Stadium, which is an actual stadium. So one of the things that, to take note of is, as you can see on the broadcast, there is the shadows of the grandstand starting to creep in between home plate and pitcher's mound. Shows bunt. Umpire says that he committed, so the count's 0-2. So with the grandstand, the shadow's coming in. The, pit, the pitch is coming out of Blank's hands in the sunlight, but then on the way to the plate, gets into the shade, makes it a little bit hard to pick up spin, rotation, that last third of the plate. So it'll be interesting, something to keep an eye on this afternoon. Fastball, inside corner, cold, strike three. And it's quickly one away. Second strikeout of the afternoon for Caden Blank. And that brings up the left fielder, Ben Bonviglio, who corralled the third and final out of the inning to end the seven rally. Fastball off the netting, strike one. Curveball. A little early there. Pulled the string and it counts 0 2. Why not again? Four strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Third baseman Colin Talbot digs in, seven hitter for the Saints. There are two away. First pitch fouled over the first base dugout. Blank working quickly and ahead. That was a good combination, especially when it's windy and cold. Fastball, inside corner, strike two. Can we have an immaculate inning here? We're at eight strikes. Oh, he just missed an immaculate inning by a fastball just off the plate. Count runs even, two and two. Just, just got a piece out of it and off in the hands. So the Saints moving down from the A Conference to the B Conference this year. Pitch is fouled away. So Talbot putting up a good fight here. So the Saints last year, they were 5-17 and 17 overall, 1-13 and 13 in the MIA-A conference last year. And Cal runs full, 3-2. Foul it away. Eighth pitch, it's the ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. Talbot making blank work here. It's been late on everything. Foul all the way again. Talbot bringing the St. Mary's bench to life here with this battle. He's about to get his 10th pitch. And Talbot calls time. Called strike three. So Blake wins the battle on the 10th pitch of the at bat. Strikes out the side. No runs, no hits, no airs, nobody left. One and a half complete from Joe Cannon Stadium. 7 1, St. Mary, 0.
All right, we are back here, bottom half of the second inning. Severn leading St. Mary's 1-0. 8-9-1 due up for the Admirals. After the Admirals played it a run in the bottom half of the first and had the bases loaded, but could not play any more off of St. Mary's starting pitcher Nick Holm. The catcher, number 14, Brendan Chadwick, freshman for the Admirals, leading things off. Just off the plate, ball one. Good eye from Shadlick, Brendan Shadlick, that is. Although his older brother did reach base. Okay, location missed, but catches the plate for strike one. Set up away, missed in. Off the end of the bat, gets by the dive of the second baseman, and it's a base hit. Lead off single for the second straight inning for your Admirals. And we've got a Runner at first base, number one, Jamar Jason Martino. So courtesy running for the catcher. Brings up Lawrence Jacobs, the right fielder, nine hitter for your Admirals. Number one in your Admiral TV hearts, along with Jason Martino and Jack Stamato, takes fastball in for ball one. So Two of the three Admiral TV leaders are on the field this afternoon. Martino diving back at first, one of the leaders. Jacob's at the plate right now. And Jack Zamato presumably hitting golf ball somewhere. Fastball misses upstairs, which is hard to do on a tall Lawrence Jacobs. Counts 2-0. St. Mary's first game of the year, Severn second. Throw over to first. Call strike one. Jacobs, freak of nature, how quickly he was able to work his way back from injury to sustained during football season. Called strike two. But everyone will remember what Jacobs did, laying the boomstick on Zion to team, he forcing the fumble that Charlie Helfrich recovered early back during football season. See if you can put the boomstick on the ball here. Ooh, Martino a little late to read that one, but was able to beat the tag back to first. See if he's earned another throw over here. Yep. When you see someone who's a little late to return like that, you think they might be going. You might get yourself another throw over. Runner's going. Foul. Jacobs, second on the team in steals last year. And throw over to first after Martino was going there. Martino getting the Vince Coleman treatment right now. Those of you who don't know, Coleman, was they tried to pick him off 17 times in a row. That was before the pitch engagement rules existed back in the 80s. So they threw over 17 consecutive times, and then the next time they didn't throw over, he stole second anyway. Baseball is a different breed back in the 80s. 
Jacobs fouls it off his shin. Count remains full, three and two. So, high school baseball, MIAB conference baseball, we did not adhere to the uh, disengagement rules as imposed by Major League Baseball. Martino going there, swung on and missed for strike three. Out at second, double play. And quickly, there are two away. But it does turn the lineup back over to the top of the order. Fletcher Warner. Warner, who singled to right field his first time up. Curveball called strike one. Working quickly. Strike two. So back to back breakers. So you can see the game plan for St. Mary's. They started hard, 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 away, away, away. And now they're going off speed breakers to lead them off second time through. And I will say for first time out of the year for Holm and, and St. Mary's, he's really locating his spots pretty well, just missing when he's just missed. Fastball off the plate for ball two. Set up away, catcher reached to, across his body, was off. Tried to get the call, asked the umpire. Umpire clearly indicated it was off the plate. Breaker. Doesn't break. Cement mixer, ball three. So the count was 0-2. He's worked at 3-2. Two. two out here. Fastball called strike three. No runs, no hits. I'm sorry, no runs on one hit. It was a race down, a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Nobody left on base. Two innings complete from Joe Cannon Stadium. 7-1, St. Mary 0. Top half of the third inning, beginning for St. Mary's, leading things off to the right fielder, number four, Harry Volkowski. Showing bunt. Does bunt. Brennan Shalek comes up, fires the first, in time for the out. Nice job by the freshman catcher there to pop out of the crotch and be able to get to that ball and fire it over to first to beat the speedy runner. Quickly, there's one away. You get a clock over there? You get a pitching clock? I have a new car, so I can get So the nine hitter, the DH, Tegan McDonough, uh, called strike one. Power runs even 1 1. A little late for that one, strike two. 
Caden, he's got a pretty good fastball, 84 to 86, top 88. Yeah. Oh. Just, just inside, perhaps it may have caught, but Shadley caught that one kind of pulling away. If he had framed it in, he might have gotten that one. If he had turned the glove and caught it, turning the glove in instead of pulling it away, he might have gotten that call. It's all right. Cade's been right around the plate all the afternoon. Cal runs full 3-2. This is upstairs for ball four. First walk of the season for Caden Blank. And it turns the lineup over for the Saints. First baseman Henry Carbone stepping in. Ground ball through the right side for a base hit. So the Saints with something going here, second hit of the afternoon, first and second, one away. Shortstop Harrison Deloach coming to the plate. Showing bunt, butcher boy, called strike one. St. Mary's, like I said before, in the A conference last year, some of the footage we saw, they showed bunt a lot. Counts now 0 and 2. Somewhere 10 miles north of here, a certain former manager, rest in peace, is probably turning over in his grave. Runners on first and second in your bunt, and you're not trying to hit the three run homer. Off the end of the bat, in the left center, Campion with a beat on it, catches it, fires it into Shadow like the shortstop, and the runners have to hold. And there are two away. Strike one. Sorry for the slow update in my graphics, folks. Uh, for some reason, my internet connection went a little wonkers there. All good. Hopefully, you're seeing 0 1 with two outs. Off move back move to first. Trying to get the tail runner there. Catcher Brennan Moran doubled down the right field line his first time up, went over the first baseman's head and rolled to the fence. Change up misses down. Count runs even 1 1. base hit, charging from third, coming around to home, and it's an RBI two-out single for Brennan Moran that ties the game up, 7-1, St. Mary's 1. 
So Moran, two for two on the afternoon. And now the pitcher, Nick Holm, steps in. Runners on the corners two away, looking to help his own cause and try to give the Saints the first lead of the year. Not sure exactly what Holm was doing. I heard the coach clearly say 1-3-1, whatever that means. Showing Bunt the cleanup hitter. It's the fourth or fifth time that the Saints have showed Bunt before the first pitch this afternoon, and we're only in the top of the third inning. Another snap move over. Called on the check swing, strike one. Cut on and miss, strike two. Call the ball. But the runner on first, Moran does swipe second. Meaningless here though if Kane Blank here can get this third and final out strikeout here. Counts one and two. Fouled away. Holm stays alive. So the curveball gets away from Blank. Blank tries to say that Holm leaned into it. Don't really know about that. Did he try to get out of the way of it? Maybe not, but that pitch clearly hit him in the left buttocks and the bases are loaded here with two away for the five hitter, it's center fielder Dom Hicks. Pitch just misses apparently for ball one. That's what happens when you locate early on, you're gonna get those borderline calls. And now this inning, Blank's command has been a little off. And he's not getting the same calls. Cut out and miss, a big hack for strike one. Okay, Blank work his way out of a difficult situation here with the bases loaded, tie game, top of the third. That pitch fouled back and the count's one and two. This will be something to see from your Admirals this year. Last year, they were very young in these types of situations. The situation would sometimes get to them. Let's see if with another year of maturity, they can kind of rise above the emotions and, uh, and, and, and be able to uh, take advantage and win the battle in these big moments. The count runs even, two and two. Does Blank have enough confidence here to go to his curveball? Just in off the plate. Catcher didn't squeeze it. Count runs full 3-2. You got yourself kind of the merry-go-round situation here with the bases loaded and two out. Runners will be moving. See if Blank can dig in here and get this final out. That pitch is all the way.
Seen a lot of these hitters late. Just misses ball four. Not sure exactly where that missed. And that brings home a run. Woo! I don't know about that one, folks. That was close. Ump has a better view, but that looked mighty good from my vantage point. And with that, St. Mary's takes a 2-1 lead. So... This might be a time for a mouth visit, and exactly what Zach Starr's going to do here to go talk to his lefty ace here. Blank getting bit here by a little bit of a tight zone. But in all honesty, the ump has called the tight zone this afternoon. But some of the calls that Blank was getting earlier this afternoon that were kind of borderline when he was really dotting and hitting his locations. Now he's not necessarily getting as he did back in the first and second inning. And St. Mary's has taken advantage. But again, this is a big spot. This is a scene last year where your Admirals, a one in, one run inning that get a you know questionable call that doesn't go your way. Next blink of an eye last year, that'd be a four or five run inning here. Let's see if the Admirals, with another year under their belt, a little bit more maturity, with more juniors and seniors out on the field here, can perhaps be able to minimize and limit the damage to just two this inning. Yeah. Called strike one. Something for Brennan Chadwick, the catcher, to work on is definitely his framing here. In on the hands. That's down for a base hit in the left field. Livingston comes up. Oh, he doesn't come up with the ball cleanly. And that's going to bring home two runs for the Saints. And it's now a 4-1 to one game. A little inside-out defensive approach. Able to serve the ball into left field. And... Didn't try to do too much, didn't try to be the hero, but was very effective in being able to bring home two runs for the Saints. And now St. Mary's is up four to one. Colin Talbot, the third baseman, stepping in. Ninth batter of the inning for St. Mary's. Showing bunt, pulls back, strike one. I mean, these Saints are essentially giving up strike one if you can throw the first pitch over. You just got to throw a first pitch strike. In six of the first 16 batters this afternoon, St. Mary's has shown first pitch bunt. Fastball inside, count runs two and one. And some activity in the Admiral's bullpen about to begin with Colby Benz looking to warm up. That ball driven out to left center deep. Splits the gap. One runs in, two runs in. It is a stand up double for Colin Talbot. It is a six-run inning for the Saints. St. Mary's has definitely made an adjustment this second time around off of Cade Blank. And Harry Falkowski, who led off this inning, Tenth matter up. Seventh person to show bunt. First pitch. Just throw it over. Strike one. I mean, they are essentially giving you a one, an 0 1 count. If they're going to keep showing it, throw a first pitch strike right down Broadway. Curveball stays upstairs and counts one and one. I 
I know you says on your screen it's 55. It doesn't feel like it's 55 out here, folks. Ball gets by the catcher. Runner advances to third. Blanks just got to take a deep breath here. Just focus on making the next pitch. Called strike two. That might have looked inside, but it wasn't because his toes are right on the white of the batter's box. Now he stepped out there. Swung on a miss, strike three, but the damage is done. Six runs for the Saints, and we go to the bottom half of the third inning. St. Mary six, Severin one. Back, Joe Cannon Stadium. St. St. Mary's up on top, six to one. Severn jumped out to a one nothing lead in the first inning, but St. Mary's responds second time through the lineup against Caden Blank, puts up a six spot against the Admirals, and thus your six to one scores. We had in the bottom of the third, and freshman Andy Blank, the second baseman, leads things off for the Admirals. Nick Holm in his third inning of work for the Saints. Woo! Okay, he called strike one there. That one looked like it was on the white of the opposing batter's box, but called strike one nonetheless. Off the end of the bat, fouled away over the grandstand, and the count is now 0-2. Holm looks like he's getting more comfortable locating his spots, but again, the, the focus is away, away, away. Line, down right field line, just foul. Blank, a freshman. Choking up here, two strike approach. Breaking ball, hit in the shallow center of the center fielder. Loses the hat. Makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Caden Blank stepping in, looking to help his own cause here after tough top half of the third inning. A couple close calls that didn't go his way. Curveball, ball one. Not insurmountable for the Admirals. I mean, obviously not desirable. Foul ball. Is that going to curl back into play? It absolutely does. That ball was clearly about 20 feet out of the stadium, and then it curled back in into the foul territory. Third baseman couldn't make the catch, so it's just a harmless foul ball. A little bit of the Magnus effect, a little bit of the 40-mile-an-hour gust from left to right. You're, 
as you learn catching any balls that's going to come back towards the field of play. Uh, 2-1 the count. So Admirals, I mean 6-1, but it's early in the year. Ball three. And you got to not look at trying to get all five runs back here. you got to look at chipping away. One or two, one or two. And early in the season, you're not going to have a starter go seven. That one's ball four. So, positive development for the Admirals. As mentioned, early in the season, starters' arms aren't fully worked up yet. This is St. Mary's first game of the year. It's the seventh, second game of the year. So, you're going to see bullpen arms. So, the matter, the question is, is can you chip away? Can you fight back and, and cut down on this deficit? One run at a time. You can't do five runs. Can't hit a five-run homer. Pick off, move to first. Blank back, standing up. Off the plate, down and away. Ball one. And if you're wondering why the camera's moving, that's Mother Nature saying hello. And hopefully that misses my car. Aiden Shadlick, shortstop, transfer from Crofton High School. powerful junior if there's one part of the ballpark where a home run is definitely in play is down the right field line lefty power hitter if you can get a turn on something here you might be able to do something below the knees ball two umpire I gotta say like there have been some borderline calls but he's been fairly consistent on a tight zone 17 inches to 17 inches that ball is driven out into center field. The left fielder makes a diving catch. Blank retreats the first, and there are two away. As you can see with that win, that ball was ticketed towards left center, and that thing just died. That wind knocked that down. Matt Fisher digs in the first baseman. Three for four in his first game of the season, two doubles against Riverdale Baptist. Snap throw to first. First baseman trying to pretend the ball went away. Kane Blank was like, I'm not buying that. Waves over the bench, says nice try. Runners going. Foul ball. Oh. Catcher's interference. did hear two sounds. It, it took me a second, but you heard the sound of the bat hitting the catcher's glove before it was fouled. So officially E2 if you're scoring at home, catcher's interference. Runners on first and second two away for Sean Ward. First pitch fouled back over the grandstand. <laughs> Student council president, quite a singer. Would love to hear his vocal cords screaming after a base hit here. Fastball upstairs. One and one the count. Been a lot of traffic for the Admirals so far this afternoon. Just one run, but looking to do more here. Curveball. Jelly legged him, and it's strike two. Question is now, does he come fastball in or does he go hard away? He's got the corners available. Game plan all afternoon has been away. Let's see if he if they stay with it. Curveball that not intended to go towards the dome, but unfortunately went towards there. Ward able to get out of the way. So they've doubled up on curveball, so you know they're setting him up for a fastball. And he was thinking the same thing and fouling it away to stay alive. The count remains two and two. Windy afternoon, cold afternoon. Again, it says 
you know, 54 degrees or 55 degrees on the broadcast, it certainly does not feel like that. So grip, feel, tack on being able to throw those off-speed pitches, really difficult in conditions like this this afternoon. Fastball. That's going to put the runners in motion here with two, two down. So base hit will most certainly score a run. A gapper might score two. Cut on a missed. Four strike three. He went chasing there on ball four, unfortunately. No runs, no hit, an error on the catcher's interference. Two runners left on base, so the Admirals have stranded five in the first three innings. St. Mary's leads six to one. Yeah, well, just the... Yeah, it's definitely improved since uh, you took your life in your own hands playing third base. All right, so we're about to begin the fourth inning here. Joe Cannon Stadium, St. Mary's on top, 6-1. to one. Pitching change for the Admirals. Again, as I mentioned, it's early in the year. Arms haven't been fully worked up yet. So the Admirals go into the bullpen, bringing in a freshman, number 15, Colby Benz. So Benz enters the game to pitch. Caden Blank is going to remain in the game, and he's going to move out into center field. Shifting from center field to left field is Ben Campion. So Ben's a freshman righty, toeing the rubber for the Admirals, digging in, facing 9-1-2, leading off Tegan McDonough. Showing bunt. Strike one. So eight of the 18 first pitches have been show bunt for the Saints. That ball driven out into right field. That's tailing. Foul. Had there not been a Gale Force win, that might have stayed fair, but it is foul nonetheless. Count quickly, 0-2. Benz, this is his second appearance of the year. So, second game for the Admirals, second appearance for Colby Benz. So, putting some big spots for the Admirals already, the freshman righty. Curveball, strike three. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. One away, top of the order for the Saints. Henry Carbone, the first baseman. So Benz through two innings of scoreless relief at Riverdale Baptist. Very big situation he came in there. First pitch misses down beneath the knees, ball one. Admirals had taken a two to one lead and Benz came in and got a couple really big strikeouts to end the fifth and sixth innings of those games. That pitch is in the dirt, ball two. So head coach Zach Starr trusting the freshman righty, giving him some looks in some big time spots here in this MIA D conference opener for both teams. It counts three and oh. Four-pitch walk. 
for the leadoff man. And now the shortstop, Harrison Deloach, comes to bat. So for those following at home, whatever 434 means, 434, that's what the Saints are doing here. Showing bunt for the ninth time in 20 plate appearances. Well, the way they swung it, I'm just really surprised that they would... Oh, and a pickoff move to first. Skips past Fisher. Goes down the right field line. They're looking three. And he's up... So an E1 on the failed pickoff, throw to first, moves the runner 180 feet. And the Saints are threatening here with a runner on third and one away. It forces the Admirals to draw the infield in. First pitch, just low, ball one. I mean, pitchers are still working on feel. Again, the, with it being cold, it's hard to get a good grip. Command can be an issue early in the season. These are just tough conditions to pitch in on top of it being early. Ball three. Saw earlier this weekend, or this past weekend, McDonough, they had one of their pitchers throw 12, 12 strikes out of 50 pitches down in Florida. So. I mean, command early season is just one of those things that sometimes takes time to, to come. And runner on third kind of dances, bends, decides to step off. And the pitch misses inside for ball four. And there's a ball on the field. There's a ball on the field from the Pitcher warming up before the Saints down the right field line. Can't get a number. To quote Major League, hopefully we'll have names to go with the faces before their first at bat. So, parents from both teams here in attendance this afternoon. Also surprised to see a bunch of Indian Creek contingent here this afternoon as well. Uh, in the stands, Former Severn head coach Bob Laffey, now an assistant coach at Indian Creek, came up and said hello. Also one of the uh, faculty members that helped start Admiral TV, or was the faculty uh, advisor. Strike one. Admirals try a, a rundown play. Shadlick, Eden Shadlick, cuts off the throw from his brother Brendan Shadlick in front of second to see if the runner on third was going, but he wasn't. So a stolen base, but a first pitch strike. And the count's 0-1, second and third, one away. 6-1, St. Mary's. Benz had a little, was able to work his way out of some tough situations at Riverdale Baptist on Monday of last week. That ball is driven deep out into left center. Blank, unable to beat on it, and that ball falls. That's going to be a stand-up double, but because they weren't sure if the, if the ball was going to be caught, the runner on first had to hold, so it is a RBI double. Makes it 7-1. to one. Blank, again, he was starting pitcher, moved out to center field. Difficult situation, I mean, the, the wind... It is kind of dying down a little bit, but it still is gusting about 30, 35 miles an hour. It's just kind of hard to get a good, accurate beat on that. Chopped into the ground. Benz fields it, throws over first. Got him. And the runners did not advance. So big play from Colby Benz there. 
And there are two away. See if he can get out of this inning, minimizing the damage to just one run. Dom Hicks, the center fielder, steps in for the Saints. Going bunt. Called strike one at the belt. I, I've watched a lot of baseball. I, I don't understand why you're showing bunt and giving up a first pitch strike. I just don't get it. In on the hands. Pop up. Aiden Shadlick camps under it. Makes the third and final out of the inning. But the one run does come across. We're through three and a half complete. St. Mary's lead seven, seven to one. Welcome back. Bottom half of the fourth about to begin for the Admirals. Look to chip away at this six-run deficit, seven to one. Nick Holm remains on the mound for the Saints in his fourth inning of work. Seven, eight, nine, due up for the Admirals. Ben Campion to lead things off. He flew out to left his first time up. Bases loaded back in the bottom half of the first inning. First pitch, foul back. Seen a lot of late swings this afternoon. Early in the year, pitchers tend to have the advantage. Drops the barrel. Slicing but cur curling back. The left fielder makes a diving catch. One away. Every ball in the outfield today is an adventure, that is to say the least. Campion put a good swing on it. Left fielder just made a play. So one away brings up the freshman catcher, Brendan Shadlick. Ground ball, second base on the two hop. Fires over to first and there are two away. So three pitches, two outs for home, working quickly here in the bottom third of the lineup for the Admirals here in the bottom of the fourth. And the nine hitter, Lawrence Jacobs, coming in. He, he's ready to hit, but Brendan Jadlick's like, I haven't gotten back to the dugout yet. Cut out and missed, strike one. Fastball off the plate. So last time up, Jacobs worked the count full and then struck out, or strike him out, throw him out, double play. It's 
working his way back from injury and suffered during football season. Ground ball up the middle, will it get through? Nope, cut off by the shortstop. Fires over to first, beats him by half a step, and that ends the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left through four complete. St. Mary Severn, Severn one. Welcome back, Joe Cannon Stadium by Arundel Mills Mall. Beautiful complex, recently redone. All turf, 310 down the lines, 380 to the gaps, 410 to center. Home of the MIAA Baseball Championships. Ben Bonfiglio, the left fielder, to lead things off for St. Mary's here in the visiting half of the fifth. Colby Benz in his second inning of work for the Admirals in relief of Caden uh, Blank. Caden Blank went three innings, struck out five, but he gave up six runs in the third inning. And I went over, and so Boys Latin's head, head coaches are here, and Indian Creek's coaches are here, and I asked them, why are they showing first pitch bun? And they're like, I'm not sure. As a batter, giving up the first pitch strike means that I really only get one strike to be able to get my A swing off before I have to take a two strike approach. It's not a lot of wiggle room. And that pitch is fouled away. So instead of being able to swing freely at that first pitch strike, showing button taking, he's now only had that one pitch to be able to try to do something with, and now it's got to take a two strike approach down to the count one and two. Ground ball, fielded nicely by Benz. Throws over in time for the out. Nice job fielding his position there for the freshman righty. That's the second play he's made defensively, fielding his position quite well. The other one on the bunt with runners on second and third, he was able to, or swinging bunt, he was able to hold the runners and get the out of first. So they don't show first pitch bunt here. Do they show bunt here now the count's 1-0? Oh? But again, like why would you do that if you've got something you know you can do something with? Not showing bunt. That ball through the hole in the left side in the base hit. Campion fires it into second. So a one-out single off the bat of Colin Talbot. Brings up the right fielder, Harry Fulkowski. Hits Volkowski. Quite the thud. And the Saints have runners on first and second for their nine hitter, Tegan McDonough. 
head coach Zach Starr going to go out the mound and talk to his freshman righty. He's done a nice job so far in the early part of the season, really working on uh, fighting his way through, but it looks like the head coach Starr is going to take the ball from him and we have ourselves a pitching change for the Admirals. Coming in to pitch will be, appears to be Ben Campion. So we'll step aside for a moment. 7-1 St. Mary's, runners on first and second, one away the top of the order for the Saints coming up here from Joe Cannon Stadium in the MIA B Conference opener for both teams. in the game to pitch for the Admirals. Ben Campion, senior left-hander, going to Dartmouth next year. Facing top of the order for the Saints with runners on first and second and one away. Showing bunt. Campion fields. No one at first. And Annie Blank was a little slow to get there. Fisher had come in on that. So a bunt single loads the bases for St. Mary's. Bringing up Harrison, I'm sorry, Henry Carbone. So Campion last year, second on the team in innings pitched. Among the MIA leaders in ERA. Called strike one. Proficient strike thrower for the Admirals. Came in some big spots last year. Was able to fill up the zone. Get some outs. In a tough spot here. It counts two and one. Corners playing in, middle infield playing for two. Maybe try to cut down the run at home if it sits to the corners. That ball has popped straight up. Magnus Effect's not going to bring that one back, though, as that makes a thud yeah. onto the roof of the grandstand, and the count's now at two and two. Big pitch here. If Campion get a strikeout here, that'd be big. Steps off. Curveball! Bends him at the knee! Strike three! Big strikeout there. 
Runners don't advance two away here, trying to get out of the out of the difficult situation that he inherited. Nice job by Brendan Jalik there to get up and get that one before that got to the backstop, preventing a run. Harrison Deloach steps in for St. Mary's. Shows punt. Just throw a strike. I mean, it's really simple. If he's going to show it, just throw it over. It's a, it's a get me over fastball. Off the end of the bat, fouled straight back. The count runs even, two and two. We've seen this out of Campion before. He's come into tough spots, been able to throw strikes, battle, compete, get himself and get the Admirals out of some tough situations, see if he can do it again here. Running. So we got a rundown situation here. Hits the runner. And a run scores on a, dare I say, little league play. So the runner on first went halfway. Fisher is like, what are you doing? Step off. And Campion sees the runner on third, went a little too far, starts running at the runner, gets into a rundown situation, throws it to Ward. Ward throws the ball a little too early to Brendan Shadlick at home. Shadlick doesn't run enough down, holds on to it too long, and hits the runner on the throw back and allows the run to score. And that's a curveball strike three to end the inning. So, a lot to say. One run for St. Mary's that they were able to scratch across here. We're through four and a half complete. St. Mary's eight, Sovereign one. A 19 or 12. Do you see that camera lens there? Can you just pass that up here real quick? Right here, yeah. Thank you so much. Hey guys, what number is warming up or throwing for you guys? Three. Dyer, is that correct? Okay. Thank you. Welcome back here, home half of the fifth inning. Admirals got a little bit of uh, work to do here, down eight to one. St. Mary scratches across a run in the, in the visiting half of the fifth. Kind of a little 
middle of the league Mickey Mouse type of play, but effective because Admirals couldn't effectively execute the rundown. New pitcher for St. Mary's, number three, Blake Dyer. He comes in relief of Nick Holm, who went four innings and gave up just one run for the Saints in his debut for the 2024 season. Top of the order for the Admirals, Fletcher Warder leading things off. Takes first pitch, high and inside, ball one. So early in the year, pitchers are not worked out. They're not going to go seven innings. That's off the plate, ball two. So every game early in the year is effectively going to become a bullpen game. So see what the Admirals can do against the Saints' relief. That one catches the edge for strike one. Driven almost off the light tower. The count runs even, two and two. Good take by Warner there. That looked like a strike for much of the way there, but he was able to ID the curveball. Laid off the pitch that finished low. And the count's full, three and two. That ball is driven out into right field, tailing over the right fielder's head, and it bounces off the fence. Warner digging for two, looking for three, and he is going to be in safe. And the ball gets by the third baseman, but he's going to stay put. A leadoff triple off the bat of Fletcher Warner. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been more than a year since the Admirals have hit something more than a double. Right field is in play today, folks, with that wind blowing out there 20 to 30 miles an hour. And the right fielder didn't recognize, and that ball carried right over his head. Beautiful job by Fletcher Warner. Fastball mixes below the knees for ball one. For freshman Andy Blank. Called strike one. Fletcher Warner doing some dangerous things out of the leadoff spot for the Admirals this afternoon. Gotta love to see it. Ground ball to the right side will score a run. Does score the run. RBI ground out for the Admirals. Cuts the deficit down. So effective job by Addy Blank. Not to do too much. Bring home the run and it's now 8-2. to two. It is getting later in the game, but you got to score runs when they're there. Take advantage. And Caden Blank steps in. Fastball inside for ball one. Blank the starting pitcher this afternoon. Five strikeouts in three innings. Line drive to third, off the glove of the third baseman. And Blank's gonna beat that out for an infield single. That was a screamer at the third baseman. He did what he could to try to put a glove on it. Couldn't catch it. And Blank with the second hit of the inning for the Admirals. And that brings to the plate Dean Shadlick, cleanup hitter, shortstop for your Admirals. Curve ball, doesn't curve, ball one. Straight up. But this could be an adventure with the wind. That ball drops. And he's saving second. That, I'm telling you, anything in the air today is going to be an adventure. And we saw it right there. Four Saints in the area and nobody can come up with it. 
So the Admirals with runners on first and second threatening here in the home half of the fifth. And one of the most dangerous hitters, Matt Fisher, looming in the batter's box as there's a mound, visit at the mound. Try to settle some things down here. Admirals taking advantage off of the Saints relief right now. Nick Holm again went four innings for the Saints, gave up just one run. Very effective this afternoon in his 2024 debut. Blake Dyer comes in relief. He hasn't been ineffective. He hasn't been bad. The Admirals have just put some really good swings on and had a little help with Mother Nature. So Fisher. Curveball catches the outside edge for strike one. So Fisher, three for four with two doubles last game a week ago at Riverdale Baptist. Ball in the dirt. Kane Blank couldn't read it. That's a hard read when it's right by the feet there. Decides not to go. Good job by Aiden Chadwick to not stray too far and get picked off from behind. It counts one and one. Line drive to third base, snagged by the third baseman. Runners get back, and there are two away. Nice job by Fisher to stay back on the breaker and drive it the other way, but just a nice, a better play by the third baseman to get the second out of the inning. Sean Ward, another big spot for him as the flagpole looks like it's going to snap in half because of the wind. The Admirals being vocal for one of the uh, barbershop quartet leaders, another member in the on deck circle. Tell you what, the Admirals. As good as they play baseball, they're probably even better in the vocal category. Curveball. Bends him at the knee, strike one. Severn is probably the all choral vocal team, all MIA in that category. I don't know any other team that has the, the pipes that these guys do. Fastball. Good take. By Ward there. That last pitch, the the, the first pitch curveball, had the same slot. That one was a fastball he laid off. And he goes to the curveball again for strike two. Another mound visit. If this were the major leagues, they Pitcher would have to be removed, or there would be consequences at the major league level for all these mound visits. But thankfully, we're not the MLB. And he takes a curveball off the back, a one two breaker that slips out of the hand, and now the bases are loaded. Second time this game that Ben Campion is stepping to the dish with the bases loaded. Big spot for the senior going to Dartmouth next year. Fastball driven straight up. Again, this is a this is not routine. This is not routine. And the ball drops and two runs score for your Admirals. The second baseman keep charging in, and then the ball lands behind him, and two runs score, and we have ourselves a ball game. It is eight to four. What is the old adage? Put the ball in play. Good things can happen, and they certainly did for your Admirals. And now the freshman catcher, Brendan Shadlick, stepping in. Another big spot here. Can cut the deficit even more with a base knock. Runners on the corners. 
Fastball cut on and then strike one. Nice pitch by Benz there. Cut on a miss, strike two. Do the Admirals here try to give maybe the Saints a little dose of their own medicine and put the runner in motion here, do something here, and try to scratch across the run? Runner holds. Fastball just off the plate, ball one. Catcher set up away, reached across his body. Very easy call for the umpire. That's why they teach the catchers now to not set up on the edge, but to set their right eye or left eye on the edge. Down low, count runs even, two and two. Big pitch here. He's gone fastball four straight times. Does he have confidence after he hit Ward to go to the curveball? Curveball gets by the third baseman. Throw to first. Not in time. Beats it out. RBI infield single for Brendan Chadlick, and it is eight to five. And Jason Martino going to courtesy run for the catcher yet again here. So the Admirals with a huge response and put up for this inning, looking for more. Lawrence Jacobs steps in. Fastball, strike one. So beautiful response by the Admirals this inning. Oh, just foul down the third baseline. The count's now 0-2. However, he's got to be thinking here. He was just out in front of a fastball. I've got to think at some point here, Benz is going to go try to go to that breaker, go to that curveball. Since he was out in front of the fastball here. Curveball off the plate. Ball. A very effective 0-2 pitch, but just off the plate away. Jacobs just gets a piece of it to stay alive here. Ninth batter of the inning for the Admirals. Curveball. Good take, good block by the catcher there. And it counts two and two. Jacobs putting in a battle here. Fastball spiked. And that's going to put both runners in motion here. Three, two, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. stays alive. Going to see an eighth pitch of this at bat. See who wins the battle here. Fouled away. We saw this earlier in the game with St. Mary's with a 10 pitch at bat that Caden Blank eventually won, but it gave St. Mary's life. Fastball, down low, ball four. A 10 pitch walk for Lawrence Jacobs, loads the bases for the leadoff man who started the, who started the damage here this inning. 
Fletcher Warner. Early season baseball, as we mentioned before, you are as good as your next pitcher. Most arms are not built to go six, seven innings at this early stage of the year. Arms are still being worked up. And so you're going to have to rely on your bullpen. You're going to have to rely on arms that are still trying to get there. And, and not, no knock on Ben's, no knock on St. Mary's. He's, he's not missing by much. The misses have been, have been small, but he's been missing nonetheless. And then the Admirals, the bats have really come alive this inning. And it all started with a man who's going to be stepping into the plate, the 10th batter of the inning, set batting for the second time this frame, Fletcher Warner. First pitch ball. driven out into right center. That is not routine, but it is caught. <laughs> Nothing routine today, but your Admirals put up four runs in the bottom of the fifth, and we have ourselves a ball game. Five innings complete, St. Mary's eight, seven and five. Here, do you want to? Good, not What? Kind of sit here. Because the stream just drains the battery. Yeah. Like you just can't run it off. Like, yeah. We probably need what we need to do is we probably need to get a second one. You have one in the dugout. Just in case. Why we just try to record? Things happen. There's only three. Yeah, things happen. I have a a lesser powerful one at home. Maybe I'll just make sure to bring it next time. So, you know, you guys have one in there too, just in case. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I was just, just scrambling to try to get things out here, you know, today because we took turn around. Yeah. It's cool and whatnot. Made numerous mentions that when we have Sean Ward and Ben Campy hitting back to back, like that's all MIA vocal team. Yeah. Yeah. No, no team that has pipes quite like we have. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they're like flush leading off. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, you have fish too. Fish as well. Yeah. Like, I'm not hitting, but yeah. yeah, there's there's so much there's so much talent not only on the baseball field yeah. but vocal on this team. It's it's crazy. All right, folks, I am joined here beside uh, Caden Schnabel, who's charging the iPad for Game Changer for those of you following on Game Changer. A5 is the score, yep. Ben Campion back on the mound. is able to get out of the last inning with minimal damage. And Brendan Moran, Thorne in the Admiral side, three hit with the catcher, leading things off. Change up down low, ball one. So St. Mary's played it a run in the top of the fifth to make it eight to one. Severin responded with a four run bottom half, called strike one. Let's go, Ben. And we have ourselves a ball game here at eight to five. Curveball, strike two. Campion doing what he's done throughout his career, fill up the plate fill up the zone, throw strikes, compete. That's exactly what you would love to see out of any pitcher, let alone at the high school level. Set up in. Fastball. Ooh. Hit. Roped. Foul. He set up in. He was early on that one, folks. That was a loud foul ball. Careful on the fence there because it shakes up. Okay. But no damage nonetheless. Still one two count. Almost got him to chase there. Counts two and two. Let's 
go, Ben. One more. Curveball, ground ball to short, charged by Ian Shadlick, fires over Come to first on, in time for the out. Nice job there. Campion was a little bit of a location miss, set up in, missed away, but Shadlick nice, does a nice job charging that ball, fielding it, good hop, fire over, get him in time. So Nick Holm, the cleanup hitter, batting here for the Saints. He was the starting pitcher this afternoon. And that's popped straight up. Brendan back. Campion oh. overruns it. That probably needed to be Matt Fisher's ball there. He probably had the best angle on that coming in, but I can understand why he might have been a little tentative because with the way that wind's blowing, you come in charging too hard, that might go over your head. But the, any ball in foul territory, is there as they teach you in infield drills, if you're playing catcher, if you're playing one of the corner infield positions, the ball's gonna curl back towards the infield. He's an outfield, he's hard. And that's tremendous insight by Caden there. He's reminding me that you know Ben is an outfielder by nature. So he saw a ball in the air and he went, I'll go get it. Off the end of the bat. Past the diving stretch of Andy Blank in the center field for a base hit. So one out single off the bat and Nicole brings up the center fielder Dom Hicks. It's a real tough stretch for the Admirals to start the season. Riverdale Baptist, they played last Monday. They were supposed to play Bullets on Wednesday, but weather led to that cancellation. Show spunt. Blank able to get the out on the sacrifice bunt there. But it does move the runner. Which Let's you go, Ben. One more. Don't have to apologize. This is an ambient mic. <laughs> Foul ball. Now it looks like that might have actually hit him on the sleeve. But the swing and the miss trumps that. So that is a strike one. But as mentioned before, the Admirals opened up their season last Monday with a win. Haven't played since. And then conference play opens up today with St. Mary's, who dropped down from the A conference to the B this year. Well, that is one way to use your head. And coaches, Coach Zach Star is asking the home plate umpire for clarification because it did appear that the batter did not only did not make an attempt to get out of the way, he actually put his head into it and to try to initiate the contact with the ball, which you cannot do. Okay? That is what he's getting clarification on. You can't lean into the pitch. You don't have to make an effort to get out of the way, but you cannot lean in. Umpire gives his description of what he saw to the dismay of head coach Zach Starr's liking. Go so we've got runners on first and, first and second and two away for third baseman Colin Talbot. Call strike one. But yeah, I mean, the Admirals open up with St. Mary's. They play Glen Elk Country on Wednesday, and then they play St. Paul's on Friday. That's a tough stretch to start your season in. As a pop-up, and that's going to get onto the Grand Slam roof, as you can hear. But Campion working ahead, 0-2. Oh, go, Ben, one more! Ooh, 
for the Admirals. Three very tough B Conference teams to start the season with here at Joe Cannon and then back-to-back -back road games on Wednesday and Friday before we head into spring break. And the Admirals take a much-awaited trip down to Florida. Playing at the Jackie Robinson Training Complex where McDonough is currently playing at this weekend. Curveball swung on and missed. Strike three. Come on. Big job, big out for Ben Campion. No runs for the Saints in the top of the six. Five and a half innings complete here from Joe Cannon Stadium. St. Mary's eight, seven, five. Got a, got a fun one. Got a fun one today. Does it work if you turn it the other way? That way you have less tug. Hey, Kaden. Need three. Let's go. Take, take a look at how much that is. Like, that's going to look awesome. That's awesome. Dude, this is gorgeous. Super nice. Well, this is what it looks like with the graphics. Wow. That's sick. It's a good look. All right, welcome back here to Joe Cannon Stadium here in Hanover, Maryland. I know it says on the screen, Glen Burnie, it's technically Hanover, right at Arundel Mills area. Severin, quote unquote, home opener, MIA B Conference opener against newly dropped down MIA B Conference opponent, St. Mary's. 8 5 Saints, but the Admirals scored four last inning, held the Saints scoreless in the top half. Uh, Andy Blank leading things off, takes the fastball. Upstairs for ball one. Ben's in his second inning of relief for the Saints. Ooh. Did that not hit him? He actually tried to get away from him. Must have just missed him. It looked like it may have grazed the jersey, but he wants to hit. He's like Albert Bell. If this ball didn't hit me, I don't want to get out of the box. Those of you who don't know what uh, what I'm referring to, make sure you YouTube or Google it. Albert Bell refuses to take first base on a hit by pitch. Hey, I almost got a foul ball. Eddie, <laughs> Eddie, you got him. Fouled straight back. So, this seems to be the M.O. that when he's got gotten ahead, he wants to go to the curveball to try to put away. He looks like he's got the fastball go, timed up. Curveball. No. Catches apparently the inside corner for strike three. That looked like to me that that bent around the plate. That did not look like that caught the plate, but... In the umpire's eyes, it did, and that's a strikeout. One away here in the bottom of the sixth. Caden Blank stepping in. Takes the breaker outside for ball one. That pitch appeared closer to the plate than the one that he got wrong. The previous batter got rung up on strike three. Oh, 
call strike one. Back to back fastballs, and Benz has now brought the count back even 2 2. Shaking, shaking. Now he's got what he wants. Come set the one in the pitch. Fastball outside for ball three. Number three, right? For them? Yeah, for the, it's not home pitch. Fastball outside for ball four. Yeah, well, you need to go back and just fix that earlier. He came in at the top there, at the bottom of the fifth. The new pitcher. Oh. Number three. So, one out walk brings up Aiden Shadlick, the shortstop cleanup hitter for the Admirals. So mechanically, I've noticed that Ben's right now is, when he's throwing his fastball, he's kind of spinning out and his arm is falling behind, and that's why he's missing arm side on a lot of his fastballs lately. Max Scherzer throw over to first. Maybe not Max Scherzer. That had a little less arc on, than, than Max throws. Fastball. I'll be interested to see if the catcher or pitching coach goes out and talks to him because mechanically he's a little bit off right now with his fastball. The elbow and the arm is dragging. He's not getting on top of that pitch. And so as a hitter, you see him mechanically struggling. You can kind of take a pitch out of the repertoire. makes the job a little bit easier for Shadlick and the Admirals. They ran out of uh, talks. The catcher went up in too many times, so now they're out of chances. They have, is that a thing now? Yeah. So, fastball. Not you. Fastball, a six inning strike. So, apparently, there is a mound visit limit, which the Saints have met. So, Catcher can't go out and visit. That one misses outside for ball three. And the Saints are in a tough spot. I didn't see anybody warming up earlier, and they've got nobody warming in the pen right now. This is Benz's game right now. Come on, Aiden. Fastball outside for ball four. So back-to-back -back walks for the Admirals brings up one of the most dangerous hitters in the MIAV conference in the form of Matt Fisher. Oh, yeah. Come on, Matt. Fisher, who absolutely demolished two balls last Monday at Riverdale Baptist, would love to be able to do the same here. First pitch fouled. And it's interesting, you've got the center fielder playing about maybe six or seven steps to his left, right fielder playing normal, and the left fielder's playing quite shallow. That ball is roasted to center field, but right at him for the second out. A great swing from Fisher right on the barrel, but unlucky to be right at the center fielder who was well positioned, as I was noting just a moment ago. Two away, and Sean Ward looking to keep the song and dance going here. And I say song and dance Come because on, it's Sean, give us something. singing is something he's very, very good at, as is the guy on deck, Ben Campion, as is the guy standing next to me, Gage Nabel, as is our leadoff hitter, Fletcher Warner, as in the guy who just batted. We have a great set of vocals, Ooh. and Sean Ward wears that one again. He got hit on a Come one on, Sean. He got hit on a one-two breaker last time up. He gets hit on a curveball this time up, and that loads the bases for Ben Campion. Ben Campion is a bases loaded magnet today. This is his third plate appearance with the bases loaded. Come on, Ben. Let's see what he does here. Need you here. 
Big spot for the senior, looking to help his cause here. Pitches hit straight up. And that's caught by the pitcher for the third out of the inning. So two walks and a hit by pitch, but the Admirals are unable to narrow the deficit any further. And we're heading into the final inning. Down three, St. Mary's eight, seven, five. That was a tough one. You want to get a run there. If nothing else, it narrows the deficit. Also, it you know, brings up your eight hitter. If that inning ends there, then you go 9-1-2 as opposed to 8-9-1. So that's, I mean, you got talent down at the bottom of the order, but I'm just saying that you'd like to give Fletcher Warner in that top of that lineup a little, you know, a little, another crack at this, you know? Wouldn't have really been on our side for that. We've had like three pop flies that they just missed just because how crazy the wind is there. Yeah. This board was like three rounds. I think that points. Well, we're playing in the same elements too, you know? But yeah, these are very tough conditions to to play early season baseball in. As you're trying to get reps, you're trying to get, you know, rhythm and routines going. The weather last week wasn't really fortuitous any and you know. It's tough. But regardless, this is a good one. It's a good game we got going on here. As we're about to begin the top half of the seventh inning, I'm reminded of what Mr. Soden said this morning during morning meeting. That four years ago on this date is when the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. And it was also around that time, I believe it was the, that same day or even the day after, that severed it. That first pitch. Call the strike. It was that it was that day or the day after that Severn and St. Mary's played in baseball and St. Mary's defeated Severn ten to nothing. And that was the last game before COVID nineteen shut everything down. One more Ben. And that was four years ago. The last time these two teams met. Curveball just below the knee is a great O2 pitch. But four years ago, the Admirals. Fastball 2 2 the count. Had a hard time keeping up with St. Mary's and got mercy in a 10 0 game in what was the what would be the last game before COVID 19. Fast forward to today. Curveball chopped foul down the third base side. The count remains 2 2. Here we are today, four years later. And the Admirals are giving St. Mary's everything that they can handle. Eight to five, they're down. Off the end of the bat to second baseman, Andy Blank. Comes yeah, clean, Andy. fires the first, for the first out of the inning. It's a natural. Looks like they're warming up some of them. And there's activity down the right field bullpen. The bullpen catcher is definitely not a normal catcher. And that ball is foul tipped in the mid of Brendan Shavlik for strike one. The reason why I say that is uh, the last couple of pitches I've seen that bullpen catcher try to catch the net behind him is caught. Shows butt. Curveball just bent outside. Count one one. It just missed off the plate. 
backed up on him a little too much, came out of the hand a little early. Ground ball to shortstop, Aiden Shadlick sets, fires, two away. Something I've got to give this Admirals defense, this infield in particular, a lot of credit. They've played very clean baseball. They've looked solid defensively this afternoon, and that's saying something this early in the season. As the first pitch breaker to number 23, uh, Henry Carbone, the leadoff man in his fifth plate appearance of the day, takes for ball one. Fastball cut out of the miss, strike one. Ben Campion is doing Ben Campion things. That's all I can say. Two and a third innings, he, he's not giving up a run. Ground ball first, picked by Fisher. Campion oh. throws it a little high, and it draws Campion off the bag. That'll be an E3. to keep the inning alive for the Saints. The shortstop, Harrison Deloge, will bat. So if everybody heard that, that's 112. Whatever 112 is, it's 112. That's good Odds are, is it gonna be a show, show of first pitch bunt? They fake money like every like, yeah, they, bats this game. They've, they've, they've shown and taken a first pitch strike on a, on a Shown bunt probably 10 times this afternoon. Fastball, nice. strike one. And I would think as a pitcher, that would give a pitcher a lot of confidence to just go in and attack because you know they're most likely either going to show and take or take. Pickoff move to first. Carbone back in head first safely. That ball. Where? Wind. Wind. Oh and the junior, Aiden Shadlick, comes on over. To get the third and final out of the inning. So, so the Admirals need three to tie it, four to win it, as we head here into the bottom half of the seventh inning here from Joe Cannon Stadium. St. Mary's 8, 7, 5. Why haven't I talked? You usually do a hot up situation like this. You heard me saying like we've come a long way like yeah. that that same day or the day that they ended up like shutting everything down we yeah. played at their place and lost in a mercy 10-0 and then the whole world shut down yeah, and we like, haven't played them since yeah we really haven't had a good squad in a while until this year like this year we're actually pretty solid i mean the a conference i mean the the A conference is filthy in terms of the talent that they have. Yeah. So you could think that St. Mary's coming into today thought that you know they were gonna, you know, they're gonna come down to the B and just run away with it. And I think today they they've seen that, you know, they they're, they're gonna be more successful than they were in the A, but it's not gonna be as easy as I think that they thought. Yeah. Well, in the A conference, St. Mary's basically had their asses handed to them. Like, they got beat yeah. really, really badly many times in the A conference, and. Yeah. All right, leading off the bottom half of the seventh inning for the Admirals. Again, they need three to tie, four to win. Freshman Brendan Shadlick, the catcher, on, Brendan. leading things off for the Admirals. Sophomore. Sophomore. Sorry, I've been saying freshman all day. I know he's new to Severn. My bad. Cut on a miss. Strike one. Another transfer then from on, Crofton Brandon. High School with his brother Aiden. The Shadlick family in baseball runs deep. They have a younger brother, Finn, who plays on Crofton's 11U. Ground ball to short. Throw to first, in time for the out. 
one away. Lawrence Jacobs stepping in. Come on, Larry, need you here. Admirals need base runners here. As Ben stays out there in his third inning of relief. Misses just low. Pitcher was in a rhythm, but I thought he was working a little quick there, I thought, and that, you can see there that it's a little, a little quick in getting started there. Watch. Just low. Lawrence Jacobs, he's a tall, he's a tall, he's a tall trick of water, folks. You got to pitch it a little higher. That might work for maybe myself or Ben Campion, but not for Lawrence. That ball... Diving step by the third baseman, throws over to first, gets him in time. Tremendous play by the third baseman, Colin Talbot. Diving to his left, gets to his feet, throws a strike, and gets Jacobs by about a half a step for the second out of the inning. There have been some good plays by both teams this afternoon, better than you would expect to see in early March baseball. Fletcher Warner up for the Admirals. Curveball, strike one. Ground ball, backhand by the second baseman. Fires over to first, throws it into the dirt. But I think that he would have beaten that out anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and for extremely unofficial purposes, give Fletcher Warner an infield single to keep this inning and game alive for the Admirals. Freshman Andy Blank stepping in. Again, just looking to move the train. Find a way to get on, get base runners. Bring up the heart of the order for the Admirals here. They're not going to hold the runner at first here, so I'd expect him to go to second on indifference here at some point. That ball hit out into left center. Caught for the third and final out of the inning and the final out of the game. A valiant effort by your Admirals. Comes up just a little bit short, but they gave St. Mary's, a team who was in the A Conference last year, all that it could handle, but came up just a little bit short in an 8-5 loss this afternoon from Joe Cannon Stadium. Nick Holm gets the win. He went four innings and gave up just one run. Dylan Benz gets the unconventional three-inning save for the Saints. Caden Blank gets the loss. He went three innings for the Admiral, struck out five, but he had that tough six-run third inning that put the Admirals in a hole that they unfortunately could not get out of. So, again, the Admirals will take on Glenelg Country on the road on Wednesday before heading to St. Paul's on Friday, and then they have their spring break trip down to Florida. So we will not see the Admirals back in action on Admiral TV until Thursday, March 28th, when they host a B-Conference matchup with Mount Carmel at Kinder Farm Park. I'm Jonathan Maggart. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon to Admiral TV for Severn uh, Varsity Baseball action. Your final from Joe Cannon Stadium, St. Mary's 8, Severn 5. Thank you.